Hey everyone, this is Dave from Archaeus Creative and I'm here to quickly walk you through the system we use to organize media within our Premiere Pro CC project files. With just a few slight modifications, we can use this basic template to organize just about every type of project we edit. First, I'll give you a rundown of how we use this for wedding videos, since they usually follow the same basic format, and along the way, talk through the changes we make for corporate and tutorial workflows. When we launch Premiere, our project window is located in the bottom left corner. We have this organized alphabetically, which you can see based on this arrow here, since that usually keeps our footage in chronologic order. Starting from the top, we've got our audio bin. This includes three sub bins for sound effects, music, and what we call source audio, which is high quality audio that's recorded separately from the footage and is usually synced with one or more cameras. Within the source bin, we may also have further sub bins broken down into different parts of the day, like pre-ceremony, ceremony, and reception. For corporate work, this may be for different interviewees or for different shooting days. The next bin is the files bin. This bin is where we include files or sequences that don't necessarily fit into any of the other bins. For instance, we've got a bin inside for graphics, which are any non-video or audio media that will be used in the video we're editing, such as logos, lower thirds, and other title cards. Then we've got our nested sequences and pluralized bins, which include sequences and media that are either generated as a process of nesting clips or syncing multiple cameras and audio sources using the Red Giant program Pluralize. These two bins might not be relevant for your organization depending on how you like to sync footage or whether or not you use nesting as a part of your workflow. Our third bin is our finals bin. Because we've divided the post-production process between a team, it's important that we all know which sequence to use when it comes to our turn on the project. For example, once I've worked with a client to complete the creative editing phase, I move my client-approved sequence into this bin so that our colorist and audio engineer know that they're working from the right version of a film. Even if you take a project from raw to deliverable by yourself, a finals bin can be a great way to make sure you're always updating the correct sequence. Next is the footage bin. This bin is usually the most populated with sub bins and files, since this is where we place all the video media that we receive from clients. This is where we've seen the most variance between companies on how they like to organize their footage. Some include folders on a drive that pertain to each memory card that was used. Others will separate it out by shooters or different cameras. And the third most common variation is actually having it separated by content. The first option is usually the best for our workflow because we view every clip and organize accordingly. So having footage files reorganized by shooter or content may only add more room for error. Lastly, we've got our sequences bin. This is the most often accessed bin as we work through an edit. It contains all the sequences of our cold footage and drafts. For a wedding video, we typically have these sub bins unsynced for multicam sequences we'll be sending to pluralize, drafts, where we work through revisions both in-house and with clients, pre-ceremony, for the events that happen before a wedding ceremony, ceremony, which not only has the synced wedding ceremony, but some of the other events that happen close to it. Lastly, we've got the reception sub bin, which has all the sequences related to the wedding reception. You'll notice that despite having our project window arranged alphabetically, that the unsynced and drafts sub bins are at the top of the sequences bin. We do this by putting one or two spaces in front of the name so that they actually jump to the top of the list. I find this to be helpful since they're here, but out of the way, and I can easily focus on the last three sub bins as I build my video. Because corporate work can be so varied, there are a ton of different ways this bin may be organized to suit the needs of the project at hand. Some promo videos may include bins that separate interview sequences from B-roll, and further define the B-roll sequences between different days or locations. Other projects like tutorial work may have bins and sub bins that pertain to each video in a series. That's about it for our project file breakdown and how we found it most helpful to organize media. Hopefully you can find ways to implement bits and pieces of this depending on how it's most relevant to your current workflow. A clean and organized project file means a more efficient editing process, which leads to faster turnaround and ultimately happy clients. Thanks for watching.
Come on.